I've been using Excel a long time and they haven't really changed the functions much. They've added some cool things. I love flash fill that they added. They added recommended pivot tables and pivot charts and uh, recommended charts, all great. But they didn't really do much with functions until now. 2019 has some great new functions. We've talked about some of the others in, the, in different videos, but this one, ifs, I think is really terrific. It's a way to replace nested if functions. So if you've ever done a nested if function, it can be a real pain. You have to remember all the different parentheses. At the end, I remember I'd have to sit there and try to close them all and count how many I had, and they would make them different colors so you can try to figure it out. It was really a mess. This is so much cleaner. Ifs allows you to just keep going and at the very end, just close it with one parentheses. I'll show you what I mean. So here I have some different parameters in terms of if you're in a certain division, then you're gonna get a certain bonus. And I'm gonna be able to use the ifs to do that. I'm also gonna show you another function called switch, which is pretty cool, but it's not as good at ifs because it's, I don't think is versatile. So let's start with ifs. I'm gonna type equal ifs, open my parentheses, and my logical test is if B3 is equal to, I'm gonna put it in quotes, NE, so there's my first one, the first division, comma, what do I want? I want it to be 2000, comma. Now, instead of having to you know, open the parentheses and get the next nested if, it's ready for that second logical test. And all I have to do is write it again. So I'm gonna say if B3 is equal to SE, I want it to be 1000. Isn't that so clean? And then if B3 is equal to SW, Oops, got to have those quotes, SW. Then I want it to be 750. And finally, if B3 is equal to NW, I want it to be 500. And all I have to do, and you can see I'm on that fourth logical test, I'm on the fourth value is true. I could just close my parentheses and there we go. NE is 2000. And I can copy that down. A little double click and there you go. Now the one thing that you still might need to use the nested if for is that you'll notice I didn't get an option for what happens if it's false. So in a nested if the nice thing is you can say well if it's false then actually multiply it by you know 0.5. But there's a little trick you can do at least. So I'm going to go back in here I'm going to add a comma and I'm going to add the true function and I'm going to basically say it's true because there's nothing in those parentheses and so if it is true then maybe I'm going to type no data and if I do that and I change NE to HW my initials you can see there's no data so then maybe you have you know um, you do a find and replace anytime it says no data you're going to do something you know to that number or whatnot you, know, you can do an if but a simpler if if you know G3 is no data, then multiply by 0.5 or whatnot. So you can, you know, still get that uh, false result. You just kind of have to be a little more clever about it. Now, switch is a little different. Switch is not as versatile. So the um, nested ifs here, ifs, you know, you can have all kinds of different parameters. So if, you know, B3 is, you know, greater than this, or if it says this or whatnot. With switch, it works more. Uh, let's start it and I'll show you the um, terminology. It works with an expression. So it's testing uh, one expression here. And so the expression I'm going to be testing is B3, okay? And so it's saying if B3 is the value of NE, then what's result one? So then result one would be 2000. And it's still testing that same expression if it is the next one of SE. So you can see the next default or value two, then. So it's still going to kind of go through, but you can see it's just not as versatile of, as the ifs because it's just te testing that one expression. So if it's SE, then it's a thousand. If it's SW, so that's my third one, then it is 750. And then if it's my fourth one and W, you can keep going and going. So that's a nice thing. You can just add as many you know expressions as you need um, up to a point and then 500. Oops, let's see what I did wrong. If B, oh, <laughs> remember I put my initials there? N E. Just kidding, I knew that. That was a test. So there it worked. So the switch works as well. So if it's N E, and I can copy down, 
and you can see that in this case, I was able to use switch the same way as ifs, but ifs is um, gonna, be, it's more versatile, and that's the one everyone's talking about. People are just loving this new function, so go ahead and practice it. It's ifs and switch, they are game changers.